All right, today's lesson. Um, a little, uh, it's going to be about pressure in our atmosphere. Uh, a little quick review. Ask yourself these questions if you can answer some of these questions uh, from review from the last couple days. Uh, first of all, what is our atmosphere and what is it made of? What's the makeup of the air? What percentage of uh, things that we breathe? Uh, two, what are the layers of the atmosphere? Um, and maybe what are some of the characteristics? Think about like the first layer. What is that? Uh, starts with a T. Uh, what is the second layer? Starts with an S. What's the third layer? Starts with an M. Uh, the next layer starts with a T, and the last layer starts with an E. And then think about if you can explain some of the characteristics of that. Ask yourself a question about the stratosphere. Why is that important to us? Why do airplanes fly in that stratosphere? Um, something to think about. Uh, just a uh, refresh your memory. But as far as today goes, uh, today's lesson, uh, when you're listening to this, make sure you're taking notes in your Google Doc or on your in your uh, science notebook. Uh, so make sure you're taking really good notes. Uh, but deals with pressure in our atmosphere. Um, first question I want to: What is air pressure? You know, ask yourself that. What is air pressure? Maybe do a Google search right now on uh, what air pressure is. So pause the video and and go look. What is the term air pressure? What does it mean? Um, and then think about what is the tool that we use to measure air pressure? So uh, go, sign, go search for that information right now. Pause it. Pause the video and then go find the answer. Now, for those of you that actually paused it and went go to find your answer, that's great. Uh, you know that the air pressure is the force of air pushing down on you, uh, and you know that the tool that you use is a barometer. For those of you that just clicked onto the, uh, uh, didn't pause the video and just kept on watching the video, shame on you, you didn't follow the instructions. So, uh, but you did find the right answer to be a barometer is the tool um, that we use to measure air pressure, and air pressure is. Uh, that force of air pushing down. We always have air pushing down on us. If you can think about it, uh, air pressure is kind of just the weight of the air pushing down on us, and it's constantly doing it. Um, as you move up in the atmosphere, there's less air above you, so there's less pressure pushing down on you. So as you move up, uh, as we would say, climb Mount Everest, uh, as we gain elevation, we are looking at uh, having less and less pressure pushing down. Um, as we move farther and farther down towards the surface of the earth and even farther down, maybe say down into like a Death Valley type of situation where uh, you're below sea level, the pressure becomes even more because you have more and more air above you. Um, here's a, a tool that, uh, um, this is kind of one example of a barometer you might see in your house. Uh, they keep pressure. Uh, they keep uh, track of air pressure in inches or something called millibars. Uh, the inches are on the outside. This is uh, 27 and a half, 28, 28 and a half, 29, 29 and a half inches, 30. Uh, the millibars are 940, 930, 900. Well, actually, sorry, 40, 950, 960, 970, and so forth, all the way through. So. Uh, but I want you to watch this video. Now, this is an example of how a barometer actually works. Um, this right here is a barometer. If you can imagine this barometer sitting right at ground level, uh, you can see this shaded out column. Uh, that's how they measure air pressure. Uh, they measure the column of air straight up from you all the way straight up to the top of our exosphere. Um, down by us, you can see there are quite a few air molecules uh, together. And you'll notice that the air pressure rate over here on uh, here says it's about 20, uh, there's 20, here's 25, here's 22.5, so about 23 inches of mercury. Um, what happens is that the air is pushing down on this liquid. Uh, they used to have mercury, now they don't. Uh, mercury is too dangerous. but uh, the air pressure pushes down on this liquid and actually pushes it up through this straw. Uh, and at this point, at ground level, it's about 23, 24 inches or 
approximately uh, 700 some uh, millibars of, of uh, mercury or of this liquid. Uh, as we increase our elevation, as we go up, notice what's happening to the air pressure. Uh, the air pressure is actually going down. Now we're only at 20. And now we are having fewer and fewer air particles. As we move farther up, that air pressure goes down even more, and we move to fewer and fewer particles. Now those are clo those are related. The fewer the particles, the less the pressure. Less pressure is pushing down on this liquid. So what happens is the liquid uh, slips back out of the tube, back into this reservoir down here, uh, and uh, as we've gone up, the air pressure has gone way down. You can kind of see as we've gone up this mountain here in the background, that's kind of how they're describing it. Uh, we get less and less air pressure. Okay, so now ask yourself this question. Uh, when a barometer measures air pressure at high or higher elevations, what happens to the mercury? What happens to the number uh, or measurement of, of air pressure? as we go farther and farther up. And if you said uh, it gets lower in the tube since there's less pressure above it or less air above it at lower elevations, you'd be right. Uh, there's fewer air molecules and so we're going to have lower pressure. Now here's a sheet right here. You're going to get this uh, sheet uh, as an assignment. So you're going to end up eventually, when we get back in the class, you might have to watch the video again. But you can take notes. Uh, as you're taking notes, you can kind of make this uh, chart on your, in your notes, and then you won't have to watch the video again when we get into class. But we're going to take a trip up Mount Everest, and along the way, we're going to stop, and you're going to have to record elevation. And then you're going to have to record inches of mercury on, this, on our uh, uh, barometer and millibars of mercury on our barometer. All right, so here's our Mount Everest trip. We've got different camps along the way. These are the elevations you're going to have to write down. So at base camp one on your chart, you're going to write down an elevation of 5,000 feet. Uh, base camp one, 5,000 feet. Then we're going to have to measure, and we have to look and say, okay, at 5,000 feet, that barometer is sitting at 25 inches of mercury and 840 millibars. So you would write 5,000, 25 inches, 840 millibars, millibars at 5,000 feet. So as we move up, as we move up the mountain, you can see what's happened here is that now we have lowered the air pressure. The air pressure has gone from 25 inches down to 20 inches and 670 millibars. So you're going to have to record an elevation of 11,000 feet, inches of mercury at 20 inches, and 670 millibars. As we make our trip back or farther up the mountain, we get to base camp three. When you're climbing Mount Everest, you do all these different base camps. So you get here and you get yourself accustomed to the air pressure. At 18,000 feet, our base camp is at 18,000 feet. Our millibars is now 500. Our inches of mercury is 15. You can see air pressure has gone down quite a bit. And then as we get up to the last one, those would be numbers that you would record. Um, as we get to base camp four, right before we get to the summit, um, we're at an elevation of 29,000 feet. Notice our air pressure is now 10 inches and 330 millibars. Uh, air pressure is way down. We are uh, started at 25 and now we're at 10. Uh, we started at 840 and now we're down to 330 millibars. So air pressure has decreased by uh, about two and a half times. Um, so we're looking here is there's very little air up at base camp four. Uh, when we were way down here, you can see we had plenty of air to breathe at 5,000 feet. Uh, it'd be like you were in Denver or so. 
um, and life would be fine. Uh, it's not until you get up to base camp four, you'll notice the amount of air that you can breathe has diminished quite a bit. All right, so hopefully uh, you were able to fill in your chart here. Um, you probably, mine's probably going to be sloppy, but um, if you are looking at, you know, the first one should have been 5,000 feet. And I, I'm having trouble getting it to, to write because it's checking me out. 5,000 feet. Uh, inches was 25 inches. And I think the millibars was either 670 or 640. I can't remember off the top of my head. But that's what you're going to end up having to do is record this in your chart. So uh, basically, in the end, what you have to get out of all of this uh, is that um, air pressure, as you move farther and farther up in elevation, the amount of air pressure goes down because there's less air above you and the less air above you is not pushing down as hard on you so uh, it would make it difficult to breathe so if you're climbing Mount Everest uh, by the time you get to the top uh, there's very little air left for you you probably would have to bring canned air with you just so that you can survive and I think that's it so um, yeah that's it so tomorrow uh, or next lesson that we will talk about is the electromagnetic spectrum so um, and that's all the energy from the Sun uh, but by the end of today uh, this lesson you shouldn't understand what's in air what our atmosphere is all the different layers of the atmosphere their uh, characteristics of each layer and what a barometer is and what it does and how air pressure changes as you move farther up in the atmosphere and farther down in the atmosphere so good luck, um, and uh, when you come into class uh, the next day here, um, we will be uh, working on an assignment.